Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we'll discuss the esophagus. The esophagus is also known as the food pipe. It is a 25 centimeter long tube located in the superior and posterior mediastinum. It runs from the pharynx to the stomach and on its way it pierces or it passes through the opening of the diaphragm at the level of T10. The esophagus is basically going to start from your mouth all the way till your stomach that is on the left. Normally, the lumen of the esophagus remains collapsed. But when there is passage of food bolus, the lumen opens up and allows for the food to pass towards the stomach. A couple of important relations of the esophagus. Anteriorly to the esophagus lies the trachea. Another very important relation is that the esophagus in the superior mediastinum or at the level of T5 thoracic vertebra is crossed by the thoracic duct which is normally lying towards its right and from the right to the left at this level or at the superior mediastinum the thoracic duct will cross the esophagus and come towards its left. That is an important relationship. Apart from this the esophagus also has the aortic arch towards its left, the left lung, the left pleura etc. Now let's talk about the constrictions in the esophagus, which is very important in terms of your exam questions. The constriction of esophagus can be remembered in the form of this. So these are the incisor teeth in your mouth, all right? Distance from this, 15 centimeter. The next distance you'll cover is the 22.5 centimeter. The next distance is 27.5 centimeter and finally the 37.5 centimeter. If you can remember these distances, now you can remember at 15 centimeter it is the CP, at 22.5 centimeter it is the AA, at 27.5 centimeter it is the LB and 37.5 centimeter is the D. So basically the constrictions of esophagus or the indentations of the esophagus are areas where the esophagus is narrowed, all right? And these come at various distances from the incisor teeth. So at a distance of 15 centimeter from the incisor teeth, where the esophagus is being crossed by the cricopharyngeus muscle, the first constriction lies there. We're measuring the distance from incisor teeth again. At 22.5 centimeter from the incisor teeth, it is being crossed by the aortic arch. And that is where your second constriction lies. Similarly, at 27.5 centimeter is the third constriction where the left bronchus is crossing the esophagus. And finally, at 37.5 centimeter when it is being crossed or it is getting into the opening of the diaphragm, that is where it has another narrowing. So these were the four constrictions that you needed to know of the locations of these. And you needed to know the distance from the incisor teeth. And you needed to know that what was being crossed while these constrictions were occurring. Now let's talk about the blood supply of the esophagus, which includes your arterial and venous supply. For the sake of ease, let's divide the esophagus into the part that is lying outside the thorax, the upper part, also known as obviously the cervical part, all right? And when it enters the thorax, this will be known as the thoracic part of the esophagus. And finally, the part which enters the abdomen, below the diaphragm. Now this part of the esophagus is known as the abdominal part of the esophagus. With these parts, let's discuss the blood supply, the nerve supply, and the lymphatic drainage of the esophagus, which is also a very important question for examination. Let's talk about the arterial supply first. The arteries are, for the cervical part of the esophagus, is going to be supplied by the inferior thyroid artery and that is because at the level of the cervical area lies the thyroid gland in front of the trachea hence the blood supply or the arterial supply is going to be derived by the inferior thyroid artery the thoracic part of the esophagus will be supplied by the esophageal branches of the descending thoracic aorta and finally, at the abdominal part, the arterial supply will be derived by esophageal branches from the left gastric artery. Now, this is easy because you have to remember the word left gastric for the abdominal part of the esophagus because almost everything will be left gastric in the future we'll talk about. All right. So now we know the arterial supply according to the parts of the esophagus. Now let's talk about the venous drainage. The venous drainage 
of the cervical part of the esophagus, the veins that will be draining are the brachiocephalic vein. The thoracic part of the esophagus will drain into the azygous vein. The aortic part of the esophagus, venous drainage is the left gastric vein, similar to the name of the artery and the azygous vein as well. The lymphatic drainage of the cervical part of the esophagus will be, since it's the cervical part of esophagus, hence the deep cervical lymph nodes. The thoracic part of the esophagus will drain into the, the posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. As you know that the thoracic part of the esophagus is lying in the superior and posterior mediastinum. Then come the abdominal part of the esophagus which will drain into the, this is also easy, the left gastric nodes. So for the abdominal part, you can remember the word left gastric. So the left gastric artery, left gastric vein and left gastric nodes. And finally, let's talk about the nerve supply of the esophagus. We are dividing the esophagus into an upper part and a lower part. Esophagus is a visceral organ. It will only derive its nerve supply from the autonomic nerves, meaning the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves. Let's talk about the parasympathetic supply first. The parasympathetic supply in the upper half is the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the lower half of the esophagus is parasympathetic supplied by the vagus nerves. At the lower end of the esophagus, the vagus nerves form the anterior and posterior gastric nerves. The sympathetic supply for the upper half of the esophagus will be derived from your middle cervical ganglion as you all remember from the cervical sympathetic chain and and the lower half of the esophagus the sympathetic supplier nerve supply is going to be derived from p1 to t4 thoracic sympathetic ganglia this was, we've studied multiple times in the esophageal plexus as if you all remember so that was all about the basic theory of the esophagus let's quickly touch an important clinical of the esophagus it is important to know that the lower end of the esophagus is a site for where the liver circulatory system is connected to your entire body circulatory system. In other words, the portal system, this is the liver's circulatory system. And the systemic circulation, connections between the portal and the systemic circulatory systems is going to be lying at the lower end of esophagus. So whenever there will be a problem in the liver, such as any kind of disease of the liver resulting in the portal hypertension, or in other words, the portal system will be damaged. Hence, that is when the blood from the liver will be directed to the systemic system so that the systemic system can process the blood of the liver. Hence, these connections, the portosystemic anastomosis that is occurring at the lower end of esophagus will open up. They will dilate so all the blood can shift to the systemic circulation. Hence, when they open up, they form worm-like shadows in the esophagus when you see it through a barium swallow in the radiography. These worm-like shadows are known as the esophageal varices. What is the consequence of these varices? The esophageal varices normally start bleeding into the lumen of the esophagus causing vomiting out blood known as the hematemesis. So the hematemesis will occur due to esophageal varices whenever there is portal hypertension that is being decompensated. The portosystemic anastomosis will open up at the lower end of the esophagus resulting in the bleeding into the lumen of the esophagus, vomiting out blood called hematemesis due to esophageal varices. It will be confirmed by barium swallow and radiographs where you can see the worm-like shadows at the lower end of the esophagus. Another important clinical is aclasia cardia. Normally, the lower end of the esophagus remains closed, but whenever there's food stimulus, this gate opens. Abnormalities when the lower end of the esophagus by birth is missing some nerve cells. Whenever the food bolus comes, this gate does not open. The lower end of the esophagus does not open and it does not allow, allow entry into the stomach of the food. Hence, the person will complain of dysphagia. This condition is known as the aclasia cardia, defined as a condition of neuromuscular incoordination characterized by the inability of the esophagus to dilate in its lower end due to congenital absence of nerve cells in the wall of esophagus. So that was all for the esophagus. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching.